What's happening guys? Kenny here again and today I've got a hype versus reality video and it's gonna be about this guy. <clears throat> That's right guys, the Ferrum Forge Fortis 2.0. Uh, I've been really excited to do this review and I know a lot of you guys out there have been excited to see this review. Um, this is Ferrum Forge's first Pro Series knife. Um, it was called Pro Line and now Pro Series. I'm not going to go into why. But yeah, um, <clears throat> this is their first collaboration that's directly from Ferrum Forge going to Wii. Um, they do have like six, I think, uh, Mass Drop slash Wii collaborations. But uh, this is their first that they're doing directly with Wii. And um, on a different level from the Mass Drop collaborations, just so you guys understand that. Um, except for the ProTech one. The ProTech one definitely um, is right here. Uh, but yeah, so just going to go right into it. This is going to be a hype versus reality video. And um, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and put the specs on the page right here. Uh, I don't want to waste your guys' time. And, um, and right after that, we're going to go right into some size comparisons. And um, let's just start with our basic, I uh, always go Spider Co. So let's do uh, the pair of three. Kind of a smaller knife than this. Uh, the PM2, which is actually a really good size comparison here. If you guys have a PM2, you can really see uh, your grip is about the same. Your uh, It has the forward finger choil and then your blade length is really just about dead on. Really similar knives here. So that's a good comparison. And then uh, one more, let's go ahead and bring in the Delica, which is going to have a similar uh, handle length, but obviously your blade is a lot longer. On the on the Fortis and you also have a forward finger finger choil so changes definitely changes the size of the knife and everything um, then we'll go ahead and bring in some bench mates uh, we'll do the bug out a lot of you guys have that give you a nice uh, size comparison of course the full-size griptilian the 551 uh, that is a really good size comparison as well and go ahead and bring in the 940 because that's, again, very good size comparison. And you guys can see uh, handle length is about the same. Blade length is about the same. But the cutting edge, guys, yeah, you're getting more with the 940 or the Griptilian. Uh, due to that forward finger choil, which not always something I look for, guys. But in this knife, is very comfortable. I'm not going to get too into that right now. Uh, another size comparison will bring in the backlash. This is a great size comparison that's in a budget friendly option. So you guys that are out there that look for a cheaper option, obviously this is a lot cheaper. You're talking, you know, a quarter less than a quarter of the cost here. So yeah, relative. Um, this is a really good size comparison and a budget option. And then we'll go ahead and bring in one more just for a good measure. Ah, Jesus. And that's the Chavez Ultramar Redention. Yes, I know it said Redention, but I like saying it fancy. Um, yeah, so this is a really similar idea, and it's a um, it's a low, like a um, U.S. custom knife maker going to a Chinese uh, well, like a um, high end Chinese manufacturer to get a production knife made. So very similar in that way. I'll bring this guy back into the picture in a little bit because I want to talk about that. But yeah, um, just to get right into it, I'm going to go right into the hype. Um, again, I'm doing this review in the hype versus reality fashion. So I'm going to talk about the hype first. And the hype on this guy, I don't even think I need to go too deep into this, but it's fair and forge, guys. Uh, ever since I've started getting into these upper end um, production knives, I had my eye on Ferrum Forge as customs. Um, they have amazing looking knives. They just all look so badass. I mean, and this one is no exception. They just have a really like cool design that's almost like 
uh, like medieval meets like, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but they have a really cool design. They're well known for um, their uh, ergonomics, the, um, the quality of their knives and just the attention to detail and um, the, the, I, well, I mean like the fit and finish essentially, but you know, it's, it all comes down to the tolerances that Elliot sets and, and they just have a high level of expectations. So that was one thing. Um, it, this is a we produced knife, which I don't have any Wii's. This is my first. So I did want to see what that was all about. I heard they have excellent action, um, you know, really just excellent fit and finish. So I wanted to see what Wii was all about, but I don't love their in-house designs as much. And I'm not really into the whole issue. I think they're kind of just not that practical. Not going to get too deep into it. Um, but I know he's got knives in every freaking manufacturer right now, Elijah Isham. But okay, it has... You know, it, it supposedly was going to have great action. Um, it was a solid knife. Um, it's a good size. I have been leaning more towards this size knife, you know, the kind of like that 940 size, which is which is a good size for me. And I feel like it's it's the level where I don't scare too many people with it, but it's, it's big enough to get my work done. Um, I do seem to lean more towards this size these days than um, than three inch blades. Which, it's about the same cutting ability. I like this. I don't really like smaller than this these days. I like three inches or more in my cutting edge. So that's just where I've been leaning. Not that I don't love, you know, smaller knives too and, and like to carry those as well, especially as secondary. Um, I just have been leaning more towards this size. So that was my, the hype, you know. It was really, and the fact that I just... I really wanted a Fair and Forge Custom. This is almost like a grail knife for me because I did not expect to get... Oh, this was my grail knife in my uh, top five. And the reason being, I did not expect to get this. I had my eyes on them. I loved the way they looked. I loved the idea. I, I loved Fair and Forge. You know, I'm a California boy. They are California boys down in San Diego. I'll get more into that later. This is... This was a grail for me. And I did not expect to get it. And then my wife just surprised me and was like you know what just get it and it'll be your birthday gift and yeah this was a birthday gift from my wife and it means even more to me now because it is that and uh, I don't ever find myself parting with this knife so anyways um then I got the thing the reality when this thing showed up in the mail Oh, God, guys, I was blown away. It absolutely floored me. I was floored by this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was like a giddy little kid when this thing came out of the box. And my wife was um, in the other room and she could hear me like just doing like, oh, God, Yo, gee, uh, uh, just making all these noises. And she's like, what's going on? I was like, baby, this thing is insane. And she could even appreciate how nicely this thing is made like you she hates not she's not into knives at all she's scared by knives to be honest and yeah sad right uh i mean she understands why i love them and she understands the functionality but yeah she is one of those people so i absolutely absolutely loved it guys and i was blown away and the action the first thing i did you know obviously is going to go ahead and push on the on the flipper tab and dude this thing just came flying out with such authority the the detent was really strong at first like if i even had any lock bar like put my fingers on the lock bar at all it would not fire as you can see that's not the case anymore but <clears throat> it when it came out it just flew out and the sound that it made the sound that it made and makes is absolutely just it sets it apart. I, I've never heard, felt anything like that. And then when it closes, the detent is absolutely awesome. It's just, it's just next level, the way this thing is uh, manufactured. The tolerances are, like he must have set these tolerances so critically. And it's just, you know, that's, and that's what I did too. And when I talked to I'm not going to get off topic here, guys. I'm going to go into what I realized. 
So the next thing I noticed right away was the fit and finish. You know, after the action, the fit and finish is amazing, guys. Um, I could not find anything that was wrong with this. Um, the fit, obviously, um, the centering was perfect. The way it locks up, everything I could tell. Um, the, you can't really see this right now, but um, I just cleaned this thing and put new oil in. I might be able to get a flashlight in there and show you when it before, but not now. Where this thing hits the stop pin, where where the tang hits the stop pin, there was a perfect line across. You could see that it was contacting so evenly across the stop pin and on the tang. It was just a perfect line. Um, I noticed on this guy that there wasn't, like it was, it was off, you could see it was hitting one side harder than the other side. So that's just something I noticed right away on between these two knives that this one seemed to have a better fit. It just locked in so perfectly and you know, the lock bar lock up is like, you know, like 30% solid. Not gonna, not gonna come loose and there's never any lock stick there. So the fit was insane and the finish is immaculate. I mean, it's like a, you know, stone wash on the coating here and it's just beautifully done, beautifully done. I don't know how well that's gonna come through. Um, and then every edge is chamfered. You can see here like CNC machine chamfered inside the hole. I mean, it's just, the blade is just perfectly um, ground. Just excellent finish work, excellent. And um, just the attention to detail here, guys. The, the hardware is beautiful. I didn't even notice that till like the second day I had it, like how beautiful the hardware is. It doesn't really come through. It's got like a polished, like jewel kind of finish to it. Um, the standoffs are beautiful. Everything's just beautifully done. The way this flipper tab is chamfered with just that perfect amount of jimp there that just, I mean, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever failed to deploy this. I mean, I can purposely do it now because the detent's a little, like I really have to be like trying to fail it. Otherwise this thing just flies out. Um, and now with the detent worn in, I can easily finger flick it. It's still kind of tough for me to get the thumb with this hand. This hand, I can. What I think happens is um, with this hand, for me to get the thumb, I end up with my fingers on the lock bar and it kind of locks me out. But I can do it with this hand, which isn't a big deal. What I usually do anyways is I'll just pinch it. I'll just pinch it like this, draw it out. But yeah, um, amazing action, guys. Uh, amazing fit and finish. Just really blown away by that altogether. And Ferrum Forge is just, just the, the tolerances and everything they did on this knife. It's just immaculate. I absolutely am blown away by it. And I just can't find anything wrong as far as fit and finish goes. Um, the Ergos, guys, when I, when I finally like got over like how cool this thing looks and the blade and all these things, I'm just like blown away by it. I put it in my hand like I held it and I was just like, is there a knife in my hand? Or is this like, this is like the most perfect ergonomics I've ever had for myself, personally guys. Um, this thing just disappears. I mean, and I, that's saying a lot because I have a lot of spider codes. I have a lot of knives that fit my hand really well. This thing disappears. Like, absolutely. The pocket clip, I can't even feel it, to be honest. Um, it, you can feel it a little bit because there's a lump, but it's it, it's so comfortable in hand. It's, back here, it's just, I mean, this thing just disappears. And then you, you step up here into the finger choil, and you got this finger groove here, and it's just awesome, guys. This just feels so amazing, and the balance of the knife in your hand, um, it's just excellent. The balance point is like with these uh, through work scales, it's like right in that that back finger choil. Yeah. So it feels just excellent balance in hand and it just feels like the knife is just so perfectly balanced. I love it. The ergos are amazing guys with the chamfer and the channels. I don't feel one hot spot on this knife. I really don't. It's just absolutely 
amazingly done as far as ergonomics go. Um, yeah, the carry is good. You know, um, it does sit relatively deep in the pocket and what's showing is not bad and it's pretty, you know, it's got awesome hardware and the standoffs. It really isn't that bad, you know, I like that how it sits and it does kind of sit back in the pocket a little. It does have a little bit of a poker there, but not much. And then I'll go ahead and bring in the scale. <clears throat> We all zeroed out. Can you guys see that? Yeah. 4.71 ounces, which is, you know, really good. Not at all disappointed with that in this knife. You know, it's a full titanium construction. It's pretty uh, beefy knife. Very strong made, you know, almost like a tank, really. And um, I'm not too upset about 4.71 ounces. And even, let's go ahead and compare it to this guy since he's sitting there, you know, 4.8. You know, for what they are, they're these beefy, thick knives. <clears throat> I don't mind that with a uh, 0.15 stock thickness. You know, it's, it's a heavy knife. It, it's not light. It's not going to be like a 940, you know. It's almost double the weight of the 940. So, yeah, I don't mind it. it don't, I don't notice it in my pocket that much. It's, it's really not that big of a deal for me. Um, although it would have been years ago, would have been for sure. Um, let's go ahead and open this guy up, get some eye candy up here. Yeah, so excellent, guys. Um, the carry's excellent. I, I can't complain. The clip is done very well, and it absolutely disappears in the hand the way they did it, and it looks cool. I don't mind it at all. It is a milled clip going in and out of the pocket. It's very nice. It's got a nice ramp both ways. So it's easy getting in, easy getting out, but it's not going to come loose. It's got good retention. Um, yeah, I'm very impressed with the clip. It works very well. It is, you know, pretty much slightly on the, on the frame and then on the lock bar. So it's not pushing on the lock bar, really. It's just, it's got an excellent, excellent design. Also, something to note that I forgot is how the relief cut is a plunge route instead of being a straight across cut, which leaves it stronger. Um, it also has more lock bar tension because of it, but it's just a much stronger design than a straight across cut. Uh, and then of course, we'll go ahead and get into the blade, which is very well done guys. Um, it is a thick blade at 0.15 stock thickness, but the way that it's broad and the way they um, take it out to the edge, it's it's really thin behind the edge, guys, for how thick that stock is. Not as thin as this guy, because this guy's hollow ground. I think uh, he was at like 15 thousandths or something. Um, but let's go ahead and bring in the calipers. I did do this on my live feed when I did that, but. So back here, I know it's a little bit thicker. Yeah, you're looking at about 19 thousandths back there. Out by the belly, I think it's like right around, if I remember correctly, it's like right around 16, 17 thousandths. Woo, 15. Yeah, I'm getting 15 right there. That is solid. That's actually as thin as this guy. That's probably the thinnest point though, as you get out to the tip it. Yeah, 16 right there. 15, 16, yeah, 16. Yeah, really well done. I think the tip's a little thicker. It always is. <laughs> yeah, then you could take that however you want. Uh, 17, 17 thousandths at the tip. So amazingly ground, really well done. Um, I'll show you just the stock thickness real quick. Yeah, so 0.1, well, I mean 0.51, 0 0.5. Uh, thickness of the handle, go ahead and show you that. Yeah, 0.5, about half inch. Really, really nice, guys. And I can't complain about anything there. Um, the S35 in this guy was done really well. I'll put up some uh, uh, footage of me cutting with it. You'll also see how well it cuts. Uh, the belly of the knife really just kind of directs the, the material. And I found that this thing cut very well. And the S35 is done very well. Uh, the factory edge held pretty good. 
and then I did sharpen it and it sharpened up really nicely probably a little even glassier than some of the s35 I've used before um, I am probably gonna send this guy out to Kurt and um, the man behind the scenes and have him heat treat test this uh, HRC test it and we'll see what it comes in at but you know I do notice that it does it, it did hold it holds an edge really well it took an edge really well um, I did have a good discussion with uh, with Elliot from from Ferrum Forge about his heat treat, how we heat treat, um, how he feels about Wee's heat treat, because he is a steel snob and he's very critical on the way he heat treats his uh, his knives. Uh, his his custom knives come out at like sixty four HRC a lot of times. He he tries to utilize the steel, so on like a twenty CV he'll go he'll go straight up sixty four HRC, which most production knife companies would not even touch that with a ten foot pole. So. Yeah, he, he really pushes the limits with his heat treats, and he was really impressed with Wii's heat. He, he liked the way they do it. He liked their protocol. He liked the way they austenitize their steels. He just really dug it, and he, he's on top of them when they're doing it. So I have no doubt that this, this S35 is done you know very well, and it feels that way as, as well. I'm going to send it to Kurt, see what he thinks. I also want him to try this knife because I think he'll... He'll appreciate it, but yeah, um, I'm really enjoying this steel and this knife. I do wish it was in, in, in 20 CV, I'm not going to lie, but the Archbishop that's coming up, the next pro series that's coming up is going to be in 20 CV. We'll have to see how we does with that. And then the ProTech that I already have on order, uh, ProTech uh, Fair and Forge collaboration with Massdrop has 20 CV. And he said that they're going to be HRC between 60 and 61. So really eager to get that in hand and try it out and um, see how that goes. I, I'm i really impressed with this uh, S35 so far. He said that we does go towards uh, better edge retention and, and toughness and less on the corrosion resistance. So yeah, you guys, you can take steels, you know, you take the soup, you take the the um this once you get the steel it's done in this type of like like steve, steve talks about it. it has this recipe but the way that you austenitize these steels and the way that you bring it down from the heat treat changes the elements it changes what what is pronounced in the steel so if you austenitize it to a certain level like like at a certain temperature to this long for this you know it, you're going to get, you know, S35 could be more stain resistant and less wear resistant, you know, like all these steels can be taken to a different type of um, pronunciation where, where you have something else that's going to be, you know, there's going to be another element that's, that's um, utilized. So you can take it different directions when you're austenitizing these steels. Obviously, there's a, um, a, a critical, like a, you know, the best, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can go with these steels and the heat treat is so important. So yeah, really impressed by that. Um, and just impressed by this knife in general. I know this is mostly just a me like hyping this knife. <laughs> this is not like hyper's reality because reality is pretty hyped. Um, I do love, absolutely love this knife. And I know there's going to be some negatives. Um, I'm going to get into there, into the negatives right now. Um, but right after this, because I do want to talk about, I did take this knife apart. Um, I'll put some pictures of the knife apart right now um, on the screen. I was super impressed with the way this thing came apart and went back together. Uh, the hardware is really nice. Um, it's nice and beefy. I'll show you these back. Um, I'll show you these, the back hardware, the T6 hardware for the uh, standoffs. It's really beefy, really thick thread and everything just nice and then the the pivot's not super beefy or anything but it was done really well um it is there is no d in here so it is free spinning pivot uh when the knife went back together it just locked right into place the the shoulder the standoffs are shoulder they locked right in i think they do have d too i didn't like a d on one side i didn't take it out of this side so i don't know if they're a deed 
but it I didn't have to hold the other side. So maybe there was Loctite or I don't know if they're deed or not, but they are shouldered on this side. I only took one scale off and it went back together so smoothly. Um, this is, uh, like I said, this is not deed. So I did have to hold, you know, one side when putting it back together. I didn't really, I just put my finger there and tightened it. Um, it centered right back up. I did have to play with it. Like I tightened it all the way and it was over here. And then as you tighten, as you loosen it, it, it went to center and at center, it was smooth. Not like, a, if I push it, it's not going to fall like this one. will. this one's just kind of going to fall on its own will, which is cool, but it's not, it's not necessary. You know, this one is more like, you just got to shake it in but extremely smooth, uh, not any less smooth than this guy. Um, when it was falling free in like that, it, it was a little off center. The lock bar was pushing it a little. Right now it has amazingly solid lock up and it is very free. Also um, where the, you know, where it drops down. I mean, there's really no area where it's like this little area between where the stop pin hits and where the detent ball hits the blit tang. That's how large it is. There's the full lockup disengaged on the, on the tang. So there's really never do you have it sticking on the detent ball. It really just goes right over the detent ball. And that's excellent. You never get caught on the detent ball. I know uh, Banner 24-7 kind of talks about that, and I find it important, you know, because it, it, I do hate when you go to drop it down and then you're stuck on the detent ball. I do hate that. So, yeah, that's really nice that it does that. I do like that, um, even though it's a small thing. So I do love the action and the way it went back together. And honestly, um, some of the negatives I'm going to say are actually more like you know, it depends on your personal preference. The jimping is a little aggressive. I love it, but some guys might actually d not like this jimping. It is a little sharp, but it is chamfered really well. So yeah, that's one thing. And then also uh, the lock bar is pretty strong tension and there's no cutaway for it. So you do have to really get your, um, you know, it's, it's strong. And after a while, it will start to wear on your, on the, like the bone. Cause there's no jimping, but it, it's just, it, it kind of, it, it's rough on your finger, you know, it's a little strong, but that's like a little thing guys. And I don't mind it at all. Um, uh, I have pretty strong fingers, so it doesn't bother me. It does start to kind of bone bruise after if I'm playing with it too much, but that's when I'm fiddling. Um, yeah. And that's really all I can say about negative on this knife for me personally, because other than that, it's just. It's immaculate, guys. This is my baby. Um, this is absolutely amazing. And when you're talking, you know, fit and finish towards this guy, you can tell that that Elliot has has kind of perfected the whole, you know, setting tolerances and setting up um, like just the the plans for the knife because this is um, you can tell this is Ch uh, Ramon Chavez's first kind of production knife because. There's little things that I'll get into when I do a review of this knife. Maybe I'll do a, you know, a comparison. But, you know, there's little things that I think were better done by Ferrum Forge here. Even though Riot's another really high-end brand um, that does excellent knives in China. Um, better than we, in a sense, you know, higher-end. Uh, I mean, they're they're relatively similar, but... So I was super impressed by the way Elliot set the set everything for this knife. Blown away by this, guys. And I know this is just pretty much me hyping this knife. So, um, yeah, that's it, man. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, appreciate all you guys, uh, the, the comments, the likes, and the subscriptions. Uh, have a great day, guys, and I will see you again soon.